On opening soon by design, a scooter-crazy New Orleans family has big plans to build a state-of-the-art Vespa showroom. I want them to see the dreams do come true. But Hurricane Katrina has other plans for them. You start accepting the fact that, you know, no, we're not going back to our life. That life is gone. It's going to be a new life now. And uh, survival. <laughs> It's spring 2005 in the Big Easy. On Bourbon Street, jazz reigns supreme and the world is full of possibilities. In the middle of it all, the Matern family. Stephen, Gail, Max, and Zach. They're passionate about their city and they're even more passionate about their Vespa business. I really feel like we're involved in a transportation revolution. This is alternative urban transportation, and uh, we're devoting the rest of our lives to this. The Matern's love affair with the Vespa began six years ago on a family trip to Italy. Originally designed in 1946 as an inexpensive post-war vehicle, the Vespa has become an icon of Italian style and elegance. Today, these sleek, fuel-efficient scooters are riding a new wave of popularity. The Materns were so inspired, they decided to start selling them. They got a dealer's license, rented this old barn, and opened Vespa New Orleans three years ago. Cool. And we are replacing that front headset. From the beginning, my parents have said that we're going to learn how to start and run a, our own business. Gail's the general manager. Accountant Steven is the money guy. 22-year-old Zach's in PR and sales, and 17-year-old Max works in service. We're doing this together as a unit, and, you know, I work really, really long hours, but I don't do it away from my family. They're here, and they're putting in the hours. Unfortunately, the Matern's location on the outskirts of town isn't attracting enough business. Maybe some days we only see five or six cars even drive down the street. Uh, we do have days where we only have two or three customers come in. We're at the point now where we need this space. We need to be more visible. So they've invested everything they have in an old car dealership in downtown New Orleans. It's on a high traffic corner close to the Superdome. We think it's just going to be a perfect place because we have these great big windows. Um, we're in a, a part of New Orleans that's just having a renaissance right now. People are moving downtown. The showroom is going to go to about this pillar here, and it's going to end here. They've hired architect Alan Eskew to transform the dilapidated 100-year-old space into an eye-popping showcase for Vespas. Immediately, what came to mind was opening it up as a lantern, uh, very transparent, uh, knocking out the walls. I've been driving back and forth and imagining the merchandise in the big windows. That's what's going to really change the streetscape of it. The exterior walls will be replaced with glass. The streamlined space with its second floor mezzanine is inspired by the Vespa's sleek Italian design. But it's going to be expensive, $750,000, and Gail's feeling anxious. So I'm trying to pace it a little bit so I don't overwhelm myself and get stressed out. Try to calm. <laughs> to save money, Stephen started the interior demolition himself. Steve was getting nervous about the clock ticking on the interest, so um, it made him feel better to start the demolition. Yeah, it took 8000 off the demo yeah, price. Yeah, he, so. he saved us $8,000. <laughs> Today, the contractor will take over. To create space for the massive windows, he'll demolish part of the exterior walls. When do you think we can knock through that wall? Uh, I'm ready to go. Let's break it. <laughs> All right. Good sign. Every brick that comes tumbling down brings the Materns closer to their dream. 
I could have used that a month ago. It's the beginning of the second half of our lives, and uh, it, it's just taken our life in a whole new direction. Pick me out a pretty brick. It's one of those memorable days, like your wedding day. We'll never forget it, huh? Nope. That's our first building, so. Our first building. <laughs> and the most important part of this day for Gail and Stephen, proving something to their sons. You know what? It's most important because I want them to see that dreams do come true. It is awesome. Opening day is six months away. It still hasn't really sunk in, and like our entire shop is gone. I've cried so many tears. I don't feel anything anymore. It's summer 2005, three months to the opening of the Matern family's Vespa showroom in downtown New Orleans. The floor to ceiling windows are going in and costs are soaring. The cost for the, uh, all, all the glazing, all the glass was roughly 65,000. Of course, it was more than we expected. <laughs> They're hoping the window's dramatic effect will justify their hefty price tag. Just from driving down the street, you'll be able to see through the building to the next street. And so it's going to change the, the, the appearance of this corner significantly. Inside, the new showroom is starting to take shape. But during Stephen's do-it-yourself demolition, he inadvertently took down a supporting wall. When uh, the professional wrecking crew got in here to finish up the job they saw this big sag starting to happen so we had to put in these steel beams to support and save the mezzanine so twelve thousand dollars later <laughs> oh Steve, What's that? they were asking you how you felt when you found out the beam was going to cost twelve thousand dollars i was upset <laughs> i got over it Everywhere, unexpected costs are hemorrhaging. A huge vent for the service area costs $9,000. A new sprinkler system, $54,000. And city regulations require them to raise the floors in case of flooding. So we did raise it, but just in this area. Right. And it's New Orleans, so it's going to flood eventually. On August 29th, Hurricane Katrina slams into New Orleans, resulting in catastrophic flooding. New Orleans becomes the site of one of the deadliest and most expensive natural disasters in U.S. history. The Materns evacuate to nearby Baton Rouge. These are MREs, meals ready to eat, soldier food. You add water and then it starts to steam. There was a lot of, of crying going on that first, that first week, the first two weeks. Because, uh, man, we went, went from hotel to hotel and then into people's houses, living in their trailer in the backyard. Like, oh, man, it was, it was pretty difficult. When they return to their old neighborhood, the destruction is unimaginable. It just kind of takes your, takes your breath away. You really, because especially since I've, I know this area so well, I don't live too far from here, but fortunately, um, we didn't have any, any water damage, which was, which was quite amazing. I can see that this is where the water lines were the highest um, on, on the houses, and, and a lot of devastation happened here. The family home is spared, but the city they love is destroyed, and the life they loved is gone. Before going downtown to check on the damage to the new store, they confront their current showroom. It was hit hard. Our store was flooded by about five feet of water. And we are in the lowest part of New Orleans, so uh, the water sat here for over two weeks before it finally went down. So this is what's left. It, it's so hard to really like imagine what's going on. Like I, it still hasn't really sunk in that like our entire shop is gone. This is where the front of our store was torn away sometime after the flood and looted. Why would somebody do that, you know? 
after all that we've been through, why would they come do that? And I guess it's because they thought, oh, well, they have insurance, so the insurance will just pay yeah, for right. it. And don't have enough insurance. <laughs> Thankfully, the Materns had the foresight to protect their inventory. They moved $700,000 worth of Vespas to a high-rise garage the day before the hurricane hit. But at the showroom, thousands of dollars worth of equipment, fixtures, and merchandise have been lost. The total loss for inventory in, in, in general was about 105000 that was just inventory, but what about tools, tools and parts? Oh, and then two, I mean, the, the, yeah, the total was, was close to about 160, 170 of everything. We had 50,000 of insurance. Despite the loss, Gail tries her best to be optimistic. I've cried so many tears. I don't feel anything anymore. Sometimes I feel really exhausted and discouraged, but then other times I know We'll, we'll succeed. The failure is not an option. <laughs> 350,000 cars have been lost, so some people are going to probably opt for other types of less expensive transportation. Hurricane Katrina devastated New Orleans and the Matern family suburban Vespa store. They're not sure how the new store fared. It's downtown, close to the Superdome, the epicenter of the storm's destruction. All right, back again. Miraculously, their $750,000 store has been spared. How do you like my hurricane protection program? I think it looks terrific. <laughs> it worked great. It did well. You know, it, I think you can go back to the city now and tell them that uh, you don't need the missile grade windows because uh, your windows survived <laughs> Katrina. Construction will resume, but not yet. All the city's labor and resources are devoted to the reconstruction. It's hard to say when we will finish, but fortunately, we're not taking any steps back. Everything we do is a step forward. We sort of feel like, you know, Rebuilding the economy is, is part of our responsibility. The only problem is you know, there won't be a lot of customers in New Orleans anytime soon. On the flip side, though, there are a lot of people who have lost vehicles. 350,000 cars have been lost, so some people are going to probably opt for other types of less expensive transportation. The Vespa was born out of similar conditions in post-war Italy. It was designed as a practical and affordable way to navigate the war-torn streets. We have a mission here. We have to get people on two wheels. It's going to help everybody heal, just like it did after World War II in Italy. But right now, New Orleans is a ghost town, and the Matern's dream for a state-of-the-art Vespa showroom is on hold indefinitely. Like many evacuees, the Materns have relocated to Baton Rouge, 80 miles from New Orleans. Adjusting to life in a new city is difficult, but riding their Vespas provides some escape. If I wouldn't have had this in my life, I think I would have lost my mind because, um, I mean, it's, it's a joyful product. It just, it makes you happy, it's beautiful. You get on it, you ride, and you don't have a care in the world. You're a million miles away, so. I thank God, this is our salvation, truly. The Materns are renting this house in Baton Rouge with several of their employees who lost their homes to the hurricane. I mean, under ordinary circumstances, it wouldn't be a really great way to live, but... Um, I... <laughs> They've turned their new backyard into a temporary showroom for their $700,000 inventory. Another one I caught my eye is the one you got your laundry on that just came out of the laundry room. That's that's its predecessor. That's to, to this one? Yes. So it's just the earlier model? Yeah, this is the earlier model. Okay. Running a business out of our backyard right now is very interesting. Yeah. Can't keep doing it. <laughs> no. Can't, for lots of reasons. <laughs> Selling Vespas is the family's main source of income. And with bankruptcy looming, the Materns have to find a more suitable showroom. And we just couldn't sit on the sidelines and wait because the, you know, the goodwill we built up over the last three years was just going to start to wane. 
So when an old gas station becomes available on the outskirts of Baton Rouge, they jump at it. Now their population has doubled overnight, so a lot of our customers have been displaced to this area. It's a far cry from their modern glass New Orleans showroom, and the Maternes have had to adjust their vision to fit their new space. There's no money in the budget for an architect this time. The owner of the building has pledged to help any way he can. And it looks pretty good to have a trim at the top, so we might as well make that the same color. It is yeah. wonderful. Giving us computers and you know, helping us get the place up and running. I think you make a reputation for a city and for yourself by how you react in situations like this. They have to clean it up, separate the service area from the showroom and fill it with Vespas. And they want to get it done in three weeks. It's a lot to take on and the uncertainty of their new life is taking its toll. Uh, every day since the storm, um, you know, you start accepting the fact that, you know, no, we're not going back to our life. That life is gone. It's going to be a new life now. And uh, survival. <laughs> Megan, oh, Megan. <laughs> Opening day for Vespa Baton Rouge is three weeks away. This is totally pointless. That's not going to work. It is, Mom. You all right? You okay? <gasps> oh, gosh. The Materns have been working on their Baton Rouge Vespa store for three weeks. I was getting ready to have a grand opening in New Orleans, and now here I am in another city opening the second store that I had no intentions of doing eight weeks ago. <laughs> There's only 24 hours left before opening, and Zach's just received news that adds to the time pressure. Ah, the mayor is going to be here at 9 o'clock tomorrow to give us a key to the city and proclaim it best for the Baton Rouge Day. Are you kidding? No. No. We're going to be here at 9 tomorrow. Are we going to be ready? <laughs> I don't know. A coat of white paint and a new dividing wall freshen up this vintage gas station, but it's still empty. Fixtures from the New Orleans store introduce a modern touch, but they were rusted in the flood and have to be repainted. I'm painting uh, basically because no one else wants to do it, because it's a messy job, and uh, that's what they make me do, is the messy things. With time running out, the Materns are getting on each other's nerves. Come on, people are going to be in here tomorrow. Okay. We need to have the stuff on the walls. All right. Hey. Max is installing pegboard over the windows in the service area to increase storage. Gail doesn't think he's left enough space for hooks to fit in. Really, that, and besides that, once you get those hooks in there, it's going to be right up against that glass. Anybody hit that, we're going to shout at the glass. This is totally pointless. That's not going to work. It is, Mom. Mom, I'm telling you, look, we have enough space behind here for that to fit. You're always harder on your own children than you are on everybody else. I mean, you have to be. <laughs> they can't quit. <laughs> Outside, the Vespa posters that were covered in mud and mold from the flood are being salvaged. They'll be the store's only decorative feature. As the light fades, the Vespas are finally moved into the store. But opening is almost put on hold when Stephen has a close brush with a ceiling fan. Good from whacking that time. You all right? You okay? <gasps> <laughs> oh, gosh. Opening is 12 hours away. Today is the day the Materns expected to open a state-of-the-art store in downtown New Orleans. Instead, after weathering Hurricane Katrina, they're opening the more modest Vespa Baton Rouge. And with minutes to go, they're putting the finishing touches on the store. It's a simple reno, but the sleek and colorful Vespas bring this old gas station to life. The doors open. Some loyal customers arrive, along with members of the press. After months of turmoil, the Materns are back doing what they do best. Uh, 460cc liquid-cooled single-cylinder fuel-injected uh, four-stroke engines. 
a rep from the mayor's office makes it all official. Be it known that the mayor president of the city of Baton Rouge, parish of East Baton Rouge, has this day proclaimed November 1st, 2005 as Vesta Baton Rouge Day. The uh, U.S. Uh, Secretary of Commerce is landing in Baton Rouge right now, and I'm headed to a meeting with him. And one of the first things that I will tell him about is the opening of Vester. It's a day they'll never forget, but this New Orleans family hasn't lost sight of their original goal. I still want to go home. I still want to fulfill that dream. But for now, they have Vespas to sell. Let's have fun selling scooters. Yay! <laughs> It doesn't make me feel proud. It makes me feel like I'm a survivor. Yeah, my Halloween costume is a big MRE, which is a meal ready to eat. The mezzanine started to sag. Oh, really? Wait, like when we were doing it, like personally? Yeah. Oh, that cat, yeah. <laughs> I'm out promoting, you know, so, yeah. Are you promoting yourself? <laughs> I feel like we're on one of the design shows now. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs>